Hello, everyone out there. I'm Brian Tierney. This is the Blessed Life University podcast, The Blue Podcast for short. With me today is Kimmy Larson of Zen Boutique Life Coaching, and uh, we're here to start talking about the blessed life. So uh, what's going on? What's blessed in your life, Kimmy? How are you feeling? I'm great. Happy New Year to you. Happy New Year's. And Happy New Year to everyone out there. Cheers. Yeah, cheers. Hopefully uh, 2022 is better than 2021, and 2021 was better than that shitty-ass 2020. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, we all have to make the best of, of our own lives, and we can't let social media and the outside world dictate how we're going to live our lives. We have to do that. We have to remain happy. So I, for instance, this morning, I went out onto the balcony. It's snowing, it's cold, it's freezing, right? I go out on the balcony to take care of some stuff. I turn around to go back in, I got locked out. <laughs> and I had to call a poor friend of mine out of bed to get me back in my own house. Oh no. <laughs> um, it could have turned into a really bad day, but I decided to just laugh about it. And now I'm sharing it here. So. Well, you yeah. look like you're much warmer. I hope that at least you were like had a jacket on and you were bundled up when you got locked outside. I had a jacket on and slippers. So it's cold. That's, oh, yeah, but at <laughs> least you had a jacket on. Can you imagine? Like, Even sometimes a bad thing can be a good thing. So I've heard that if you you know chill your body that it can be good for your immune system likewise with the opposite with heat therapy as well mm -hmm. um i know in some countries and places they actually do hot cold therapy to it's like um they call it hormesis it's like shocking your system a little bit just to get it working to get the immune yes. system going and so it's too too much of a good thing can be a bad thing though so if you want to be out there for a few minutes that's probably good if you get locked out there for 45 minutes to an hour or yeah. longer in the cold that's probably a bad thing yeah it was about 45 minutes it was pretty bad. Really? Yeah. I was like, oh, no. And then I have my dad and my dogs in the inside, and they're scratching at the door and crying. Yeah. Like, come, come on in. in. I wish I could. Do you know how to open the door, Fifi? Unlock it. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Yes. Were, you, were your feet, like, frozen by the time you got in there? Yes. My my legs, my butt, my feet, <laughs> everything was frozen. The, my upper part of my body was okay because I'm, like, with my jacket, and I'm breathing in to keep everything else warm. Yeah. Not well, good. I, uh, I hope you're all right, Kimmy Larson. You don't turn into a <laughs> Kimmy Larson popsicle because that wouldn't be so sad. Oh, no, not at all. And I was like, okay, I'm out here. I'm freezing. I need to keep warm. And what can I do? to help the time pass by. What can I do that's so positive? And I'm like, I can meditate. And I was like, I can't, because I'm so cold. <laughs> Shit, I'd be up there doing the YMCA for all the passersby coming by in the car. It's fun to stay at the YMCA. I, you know what? I should have done ja YMCA. jumping jacks. YMCA. <laughs> I'm locked outside. I cannot feel you anything go. but this real cold. Young man. Why? <laughs> People would have got a kick out of that and you would have stayed warm. They probably would have came by and said, are you okay? And I would have been like, no, I'm locked out. Can you come and let me in? <laughs> yeah, no shit. Like, don't, do they have like a... Um... Like an attendant on duty down at the door, or no. is it a more small building? It's a smaller building. Um, so thank God my, my front door was unlocked. Yeah. Because um, I didn't even have my keys on me. Yeah. I mean, why am I going to take my keys with me, right? And so, yeah. And it was funny because he texts, he's like, okay, crazy question, but do you have your door unlocked? <laughs> I'm like, yes. Well, good thing you did. Like, usually unlocked doors are a good thing or a bad thing. Like, growing up, my dad was this old-school Irish immigrant, and he was all about security. So the doors were always locked at our house. Like, you're not just going to be able to walk in if you if you go up there. And to this day, I feel like open doors are an invitation, especially here in America. Like, you're going to leave that open, and it's only so long before somebody's going to test their luck, I feel. Mm -hmm. So usually it's a you know a good thing to have locked doors. But in this case, it would have been bad. It would have been very bad. I would have definitely been a popsicle. <laughs> very frozen. <laughs> Tell us how you got out of that situation. Well, he came. 
Um, he is your friend. He's a, a good friend of mine. Good friend of yours came by. Luckily, he lives somewhat close by, it sounds like. He's about, I want to say about 20 minutes away. 25. Yeah. I'm like, oh, my God. So thank God that he was able to come. And he got in. And, of course, the dogs are like, ah, you know, going yeah. crazy and uh, everything. How? But... Stop Fifi from biting my leg. <laughs> Yeah. I'm just trying to let you in. Or hurry, hurry, let my mom in. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right this way. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so um I decided to laugh about it and continue with my day in a healthy way. I did a I met with a couple clients okay. via um Zoom. So I didn't have to leave my house for that. And again, thank God he was available to let me in otherwise i would have missed my clients while being frozen <laughs> yeah they'd be like what's wrong with you coach like where are you at i'm i thought we had an 11 i'm sorry i'm locked outside yeah um yeah well you know the realtors got the right idea they have lock boxes so what i think from now on <laughs> Get a lockbox for that balcony. Put it, like, if there's a railing yes, or not it's a something, great idea. Put, I mean, because on the balcony, it's really only going to be you that would need it anyway. And just in case, worst case scenario, you know, if it defaults to lock or if you've yes. already put it on lock just out of force of habit, um, you'd have a lockbox out there where you can get in. Of course, you would. I love that idea. I'm going to do that. For sure. They're like 20 bucks, 20. Well, okay, I'm exaggerating. Everything is more expensive nowadays. But like 25 dollars $30, you can get ones that you can put, like, around a railing or a doorknob. Um, and either do that, mm -hmm. you can do it outside too. There's no rule saying that you can't. Like some of these pictures that the realtors have online, they'll be like 20 lock boxes yes. on like a friggin' railing or yeah. whatever. It's like, just know which one is yours. Maybe put a little like, you know, marker on there, a little tape that's like colored tape or something yes. and yeah. keep you know it what? in a place where you need it. I Those... would do like two or three of them, one on the balcony, one for the <laughs> inside door and one for the outside door or something, right? Well, I, I'm hoping to God this never happens again, but the lockbox is a good idea and I am going to do that and leave it on the balcony. Yeah, leave it on the balcony in case the balcony gets locked. Maybe you have one outside somewhere like on one of the pipes or yeah. near somewhere where somebody can find it because if yeah. they needed to get in there and you were stuck and even if it was like you know, emergency responders, worst case scenario, something happened, those doors were locked and you can't get down there. Mm -hmm. At least you could tell them like, look, you can get in the, the front door this way, the right. main door of the, the unit this way. Um, for the price, it's a great insurance policy. Most definitely. And let this conversation be a motivator for me. I do have a lockbox for my office building we're at here, um, but I have one for my house. I just never installed it. Uh, so I do have to do that too, because there's times where you know, my wife, she doesn't like to leave the house with her keys all the time. But it's like, if you're a stock, you need it. It's just, it's such a simple insurance policy. You just take a drill, drill it in the wall. Or if mm -hmm. you have one of the ones that hangs on a, ra a railing or something, put it yes. on there and you always have it when you need it. Because, yeah. you know, a lot of people, they're like, well, technology now, you can have one of the ones with the keypad and just make that your door lock. And I'm like, I don't know, man. Like, sometimes like old is better. You know what I mean? Um, like the, the older method of doing things, it's like, what if the battery goes out on that or the app is down or something? How do I get the door open if I need it? Mm -hmm. Well, the old school ones, like they just do what they're supposed to do. And an another example of that, that we've seen that's like a major issue right now is the chip shortage because nothing works without a chip now. Apparently. I know. You know what I mean? Yes. Like a car used to get in there, you would turn it on. And then you would drive to where you need to go, which is yes. the main purpose of the fucking car. Yes. But now, if you don't have chips, which there's a shortage of, and I feel like they're probably playing fuck games with those too, you can't get the chips and you can't start the car. There's cars sitting there they can't sell. And there's all sorts of stuff we as consumers cannot do without these chips. Right. And the thing about it is, like, they put these computers into the car and they have this stuff on the dash. It's like, I have a supercomputer in my hand. I don't need that shit on the dash of my car. I just need a car that can turn on and drive. And go. Yeah. Yeah. Just it doesn't need go. all that fancy shit that's really just a distraction while you're driving anyway, right? Yes. Like they talk about distracted driving. You have this fucking screen on the dash of your car and you're staring at that when you should be looking at the road, you know? Yes. I know. I see all these fancy cars and they have the screens as big as the laptop. And I'm like, why? Why is that there? <laughs> I don't get it. I'm not. 
I'm not bougie like that, I guess. I don't know. Is that bad to say? <laughs> no, it's not bad to say. It's I'm, I'm not very simple. Yeah, it's simple for me as well. Um, mm -hmm. and the the screens that's just one more thing to go wrong, or the computer or whatever, it's just one more thing to go wrong. And those are expensive repairs too. Like yes. they used to be, you know, you take it down to John Service Center, and it's oh, okay, you know, your alternator's bad or whatever. Now. You know, everything's hidden. The motors are so much more complicated. Like they have these rocket scientists who decide what's going to go where yes. so it all fits under the hood. And then good luck finding the stuff when it's wrong. You have to take the whole thing apart. And then you're paying these people thousands and thousands of dollars. And the crazy part about that is with the whole chip shortage, shortage is it's not just getting it, but then you have to have it reprogrammed once you put the new chip in there. So if a chip goes bad in your onboard computer, you better hope that the mechanics aren't on strike when you need to get yes. it reprogrammed because it literally yes. happened to a good friend of mine, a family friend, where they finally got the chip or whatever they needed to fix the car. But then, and you know, I, I support working people, but the, the workers were on strike and she had to wait weeks to get her car back up and running. That's what happened to me. My It was my sunroof. My sunroof would not close. That's a bad problem to have. Yes. Almost as bad as being locked outside on a winter day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was really bad because my car could have gotten really ruined with rain and things like that. So thank God we didn't have terrible weather. And thank goodness they were able to close it as much as possible so rain did not get in. Um, <clears throat> and I, too, I had to wait over a month to get my car in. So It's a long wait. Like, what do they expect working people to do? Not only to wait that long, but... yeah. To the bill when you see it is there's not I mean it I feel like kind of nothing's cheap nowadays but certainly car repairs aren't mm -hmm. and um this will be a recurring theme on this podcast is just how hard it is for working people nowadays between you know inflation mm -hmm. and you know everything with the coronavirus and just the money doesn't go as far as it used to mm -hmm. and you know I, I, everything that between the coronavirus and inflation all this and uh, competitive pressures at home and abroad. It's just hard for the average working people to make it, I feel. You know? Yeah, most definitely. And and that goes to our last podcast when we were talking. And I had mentioned a whiteboard. Yeah. Um, so if you have a, a family or you and your husband or partner or whatever, have a whiteboard. Um, and put out the things that you need to get done, what you need to do. Um, so everybody's on the same page with each other. Um, cause everything that we're going through, it does, it creates, um, so much chaos, you know, physically and mentally and, um, can't afford that. And so, yeah, I'm a whiteboard crazy person. I know you are. You're <laughs> fucking, you are like the Marine Corps drill sergeant I with am. the whiteboards, but I don't blame you. I really don't. And, um, I admit I don't whiteboard as like I should probably, especially in the business that I have, but that doesn't mean that I can't start doing that. Um, but I do keep a journal. I got it here uh, just mm -hmm. to kind of keep track of my thoughts. And I really wish I had journaled since I was in my 20s because I've lived a pretty crazy slash interesting life. And mm -hmm. it would have been cool to kind of go back through those memories and write them down in real time so I could it's like a it's like saving a file on a computer once you find it it, it brings you right back to the place where yes. you were mentally when you wrote that yes. and i listen to this comedian joey diaz he does a um he does two podcasts a week usually and he kept a journal like his whole life i think and his i don't know it was his mom or his aunt or somebody told him to do this and now when he wants to talk about something he talks about it with like the memory of like a steel trap like once it's wow. in there like first of all i think the guy just has a good memory but also i think he'll probably revisit those when he's going to talk about certain stories or certain things from the past and he's writing a book now and it must be a lot easier since he documented it like me i have add i've smoked a lot of pot over the years <laughs> i've drank my memory is like i i'm it's pretty good but i'm sure there's a lot of details there would have been nice to preserve in time you know so i could revisit those throughout my life because yeah. Things go away, you know, like my my grade school closed uh, this year in Summit, Illinois, St. Joseph's, rest in peace. And mm -hmm. then I also went to St. Joseph's High School. They just closed this year as well. And I have a ton of memories that I can replay, but I wish I had just journaled a little bit. I just, 
didn't have the focus back then. I was out busy living life and enjoying it that I didn't really stop to reflect and write it down. But yeah, now no, I started just like a paragraph a night, just how I felt that yes. day or what happened to me that day. Yeah, and you didn't have anyone in your life to say, hey, you, you know, you're going through a lot. You're doing a lot. You should probably, you know, start journaling. I mean, if someone said that to you, I bet you you would have, right? They'd have to stay on my ass because gotcha. discipline is a, is a blade that I have had to sharpen over many, many years. And I'm trying to get there now and, and get better at it. And that's something that we'll talk about today as well. But uh, I would have to have somebody stay on me to really, to really push me in that direction to keep me on target, on task, uh, and disciplined with it, um, which I know is something that you do in your career um, with your clients. And um, and yeah, I, I, I would have, if I, but it would have to have somebody to stay on me because part of the ADD that I've had throughout my life is just I'm going in a million directions. Mm-hmm. And now in my, in my job, I just... I can't even control it. I'm just pulled in a million directions because so many people want to talk to you about stuff, whether it's your staff or your clients or, you family. know, the, the business partners you work with, like the realtors in the business. And then, mm-hmm. yeah, and then, you know, family as well. Um, so I am I am stretched thin at times. And what I try to do in my life, though, which I feel would make everybody um, better off is to be to get comfortable with the uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's, sometimes it can be a very bad thing. Like if your body's sick, like don't get comfortable feeling like shit, like go get the medical care you need. But um, there's there's so much, uh, so many things that are uncomfortable now, um, especially, you know, the last couple of years with, with coronavirus. And I think you if you can get comfortable, like getting in that deep end and learning to breathe right while you're swimming or whatever, or holding your breath underwater, or whatever, those are analogies to the situations we face in life. Mm -hmm. And I feel that one thing that really, really helped me with that is doing yoga. Um, I don't do it on my own as much as I should like I used to, but I, once a week they have yoga in the park uh, at Valley Forge Park right over here on the southwest side of Chicago. They used to have one on Thursday nights as well, but they haven't opened up that field house yet. But that's kind of like a religion to me. I go there everybody else there's the regulars and sometimes i'll have a friend or two join me and i always think it's cool that i can show them this cool thing what i feel that it's helped me most with is breathing under pressure and breathing while i'm strained and i have now carried that to the rest of my life yes whether it's at work whether it's in my car in traffic or when i'm in a crowded store or something remembering to breathe while i'm in a strained place when i'm uncomfortable um i i find that like all the time they tell us, you know, in class, make sure you're breathing. If you're not breathing right now, you're straining too hard. Uh, don't strain too hard. Do what mm-hmm. is comfortable. This is, there's, you're not going in there to compete. You're just going in there to be a better person, to be a better you. And that's something that's really helped me out is focusing on breathing yes. while I'm in strange situations because you'll be in there, you'll be bent, and you have these muscles that are activated, yes. and you're just like you're using... you have to breathe while you're balancing, and you have so many things going on. You don't even realize it. Yes. Yeah, you're using muscles – that you don't realize are there (laughs) and you know so then you're done you're like oh my god that was very painful and I didn't do anything but you did you're stretching things that you haven't stretched before well yeah I mean you don't I never really thought about it as exercise but it really is it's because what you're doing is you're forcing your body and your muscles to be held in a certain position Mm -hmm. or stretched in a certain way that they're not used to doing like most of the time, like, what are we doing right now? We're sitting down, um, mm-hmm. you know, and we do that so much probably in our everyday lives. You're really activating a lot of muscles that you don't use. You know, maybe you've never used them or you haven't used them in a really long time. Mm-hmm. And uh, breathing while you're doing that is super beneficial and you could definitely carry it over. Like that's, that's what I was saying too is like some of these positions that you're in, especially if you're not flexible, I'm blessed and I have been since I was a kid. I'm fairly flexible. Mm-hmm. I'm not like these crazy chicks you see in the, you know, movies or something that can do, you know, twist their body into a yes. pretzel or something. But I'm I'm pretty flexible, all things considered. Uh-huh. Um, so it, for me, it's pretty natural. But at the same time, it's still focusing on your breathing and staying calm while you're in these positions you're trying to yes. balance or whatever. It, it really helps, you know. It makes you mentally tougher, I feel, yes. to deal with uh, strain in your life. And that's that goes for meditation, too. So... When you're meditating, I, I've talked to a lot of people and, and, and have asked the question, have you meditated? You know, do you meditate? Do you like meditating? And I, I hear so many people say, nah, I can't do it. 
And I'm like, why? I'm like, ugh. I try to meditate, try to get into the whole music aspect of it to be calm. But I just, I'm thinking too much and I realize, oh my God, I have to do this or I have to do that. And um, part of meditating is emptying out your thoughts. And I think it's so crucial to empty out your thoughts before, you're me- before you meditate. And so again, with the whiteboard or even your journal, um, write down everything that you're thinking about. So that way you can just finally relax and breathe. And as you're meditating, you should be able to feel from your toes the warmth in your toes all the way up to your neck you should be able to feel that and just feel so light while you're breathing so that's so important if you have too much going on in your head and you don't write it out you're not going to be able to meditate so that's huge and you know what would be really cool um speaking of meditation if anyone, I don't, if this is okay with you, any um, meditation experts out there, if they can maybe comment, you know, and give, you know, suggestions or let me know if I was right or wrong about that. <laughs> you know what I mean? That would be kind of cool. How Have you been meditating for a while? How long have you been meditating for in your life? Um, I want to say for the past probably eight years now. Eight years? Mm-hmm. Yep. How, how has that eight years been? Has it been kind of a journey till you've gotten to where you're at right now with meditation? It's been a huge journey for me. Um, my kids were in high school and I knew that they were going to start leaving the nest. And I was, you know, being a single mom, I don't want my babies leaving me. Right. Um, so I had to find a way to help keep calm in my life and keep calm internally and meditation helped me through that after you're done meditating how do you feel like is it internal peace of mind you feel more at peace with what else whatever else is going on in your life or the world is that how you feel oh my gosh yes i feel like i I think it's more so because i emptied out my thoughts like uh, this is all i have to do today this is what i have going on for the week i don't want to think about that before I meditate. And so once I I write it all out and I'm done meditating, I go back to my book and I'm like, all right, this is cool. Because it puts me in such a good mood and it, it energizes me. For me, that happens. And so I hope that happens for a lot of other people too. And you feel like after having meditated that you deal with and approach things within your life and your work life and your personal life better because you've yes nourished your mind if you will gave it a nice oil change or yes. something like that if you want to compare it to like uh we are kind of machines after all this is a vehicle that we have to get us through our life our, our mm-hmm. mind and our body yeah i i'm happy i'm my whole day is happy my whole day is good and i i've had so many of my friends or coworkers or you know whatever have you back when i started meditating Oh my God, you're always so happy and you're always smiling. You are, you truly are. Yeah, and that's because I, I empty out my thoughts and I, I, our thoughts are like puzzle pieces, right? They're, you've got, they're just a whirlwind of everything going on in your life. And if you write them down and you start putting the pieces together, you feel so good. And especially the whole breathing aspect of it. You feel your body just relaxing. And that's that's huge. It's so important. The next time um, we do our podcast, maybe I'll show you, you know, how to meditate and how your body should be feeling. That sounds awesome. I mean, we can chat about it uh, even after we wrap up here today, mm-hmm. because meditation is one thing that I am going to start doing in my life. Uh, Rogan had on a really renowned doctor um, or whatever i'm not sure if she was a doctor she was one of his guests Mm -hmm. and she just wrote a book on meditation and uh she herself had read a book that kind of got her started on that which i actually have with me today i'll bust that out in a little while uh but what she was saying i think is they've done studies on meditation and how how it is good for both the mind and the body for Mm -hmm. your health as well Mm -hmm. um and i think that as a people 
we are just scratching the surface now of the connection between our minds and our bodies. Yes. And I feel like in the past it was kind of like, you know, get your ass in line, soldier, and get back to work. We don't have time to think about feelings here. When mm-hmm. really we probably need to cleanse our minds, like you say, first to, to, to just cleanse your mind and get everything out of there and then clean it and defragment it, almost like a computer. Your mind yes, is very fragmented. I love your you want words. to yes. Yeah, it's just a lot of it comes from um just listening to other people and conversations and mm-hmm. podcasts and books and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. But but yeah, to defragment your mind because as you say, getting things out, I think I was going through this last year, especially toward the end of the year, usually there's a slowdown in real estate. And there was not this year. It continued to stay busy. Uh, usually the slowdown will come around back to school time. But for me, uh, and just so everybody knows what I do, I am a real estate lawyer. Um, some states are attorney states, some are not. Illinois is an attorney state where attorneys are more involved in real estate transactions. And so I handle a real estate transaction from contract to closing. So once that contract is signed, I review it, I can modify it or try to modify it for the benef- my, benefit of my clients and to get any other agreements in place that would need to be there to mm-hmm. make the transaction work. And so that's my role. Uh, I mean, that's kind of a very brief role of what I do. You know, I, there's about five core things that I do as part of a transaction. And then there's a million other things. So a lot of clients want to talk to you about their fears, their comments, their concerns, and just so they, c- they can have peace of mind with the process that's unknown to them or unfamiliar, mm-hmm. uh, even if it's not completely unknown. But as I was saying, usually a slowdown comes around back to school time and did not come this year. I feel that I was probably busier during the fall than I was even the summer or the spring, which is kind of crazy because usually those are the time where everybody's moving, right? There's no snow. You can move easily. Mm-hmm. It's easier to be out there shopping to you know, drive around and see multiple homes right. and figure out the one that you want. And now the, there's a very low inventory of housing. So you kind of just choose what is available or whatever you can, can choose at this time. Mm-hmm. But I told you all that to tell you that I, I had so much on my mind and um, so much that was bottled up and that, uh, that I needed to get out for my own personal goals. Because one of the challenges I have is that my personal stuff usually comes second to the business because it's very time consuming. It's a very demanding business. Um, in order to make a good living, I charge low flat rates. So for a typical real estate transaction, I'm charging uh, $550 on the buyer side. And that's for like two months of work. Usually lawyers are billing at like $300 an hour. And we work here for, you know, about two months, give or take on a transaction, sometimes more, sometimes less for $550. Now, we do make money on title insurance when we work on the seller side. So the extra money that we make from the title insurance company kind of subsidizes the low mm-hmm. flat rates that we charge. But regardless, you have to do a lot of these to make a good living. And so because of that, because of the demanding nature of the business, my own stuff waits. But what I did one day, and it felt so therapeutic, was I took some time on a weekend and I started writing everything down. So I'll show this to everybody. Mm-hmm. I, I like to keep things in black and white personal awesome. and business plan so everybody out there if you can see that it's in big print personal mm-hmm. and business plan so i took all the stuff that was on my mind and i sat there i took a long time to think about all the different things that, okay. that i need to do and i kind of had this in place and now i feel much better about it why because as my friend told me he's an attorney does the same thing i do he says the faintest of ink is stronger than the strongest of memories. So part of all the things that I had going on in my life that was stressing me out was just forgetting about some of the things that I could have overlooked. Yeah. But I really took that time to just get it all out. That's good. And it's so healthy. See, once you do something like that and you um, implement the whole meditation thing, you're going to feel your body just float. I can't wait because... I feel like I'm carrying less weight with me just getting it out there and knowing that it's like I've externalized it. I put it in its own compartment somewhere else. It exists outside of me. And not only did I write it down and put it in here, but I also scanned it in my computer good. because um, I take good care of my shit in all facets of my life. Like this phone is like two years old. It doesn't have a scratch on it, right? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and with stuff like this, I take good care of my stuff, but you never know when you might lose something, right? 
you, when you're a busy professional like we are, you get up at the restaurant, maybe you left it behind, you might never see it again. I lost a scarf recently. Pissed me off like a motherfucker, yep. right? <laughs> I mean, I went out there and I bought another one, but I, I still have to call the place where I was at and be like, yo, did you guys find a scarf? Yes. It was a thick knit scarf. And another thing that pisses me off is when you go to a store and you can't find what you used to be able to get there. Like this one was like a Nautica scarf. It was very thick knit. Kind of made me look like a grandma wearing a shit or whatever, but <laughs> but it kept my neck warm. Like Hell my yeah. neck is the thing that freezes the most easily. I feel like if every if, 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 if as long as my neck's covered, I can survive. That's you know, right. for whatever reason, I don't know why that is. Yeah, but uh, I feel like my if my neck and my shoulders are warm, then my body is warm. So I like that. You have your little shawl going yes. on there. My scarf. Ooh, elegant lady with your shawl. <laughs> <laughs> actually, blessed life university. I'm blessed. Actually, I just told on myself. I stole this from my daughter. She doesn't know. Well, you gave her the gift of life, so this is kind of a down payment. <laughs> That's right. That's right. You hear that, Amber? <laughs> <laughs> Let's not rub it in, but also, <laughs> you're the queen. You make the rules, right? I'm going to borrow this and That's maybe right. never give it back, but at least you know where it's at. That's right. <laughs> I saw it. I was like, ooh, this is warm. I'm going to take it. There was this guy out there online, and if you ever get a chance to check him out, um, I discovered him through the Rogan Podcast, which is the way I discover so many things and people, which is a great thing about that, that shows the variety of guests and new things and new ideas. But his name's Naval Ravikant. He's kind of like an angel investor, and he works a lot with like Silicon Valley and mm -hmm. different things like that. But he, when he was talking about meditation, he said, your goal should be to, like you say, kind of empty out your mind. And if you looked at it kind of like a email inbox, to work at clearing your mind and getting peace until you're at the magical number of zero, That's where right. there are no new unread messages left. Um, and that's when you get closer to finding peace. Mm -hmm. See, now I've talked to people about that, and they would say, yeah, but it's always going to be there. It's always going to be there. Something else is going to come up. But if you keep thinking that way, then it is going to be there. Um, and that's why I say to write it out, write out your thoughts, so that way you have a plan. You can make a goal out of it. Make a plan. Do, you know, do something with it. Put it in your uh, monthly planner, not your phone. Because we're not always going to go to our phone to check to see what we need to do. At least if the monthly planner is sitting on your car, you know, the seat of your car, it's in your bag, whatever have you, you pull that out and you're like, oh, well, yeah, I got to get that done today. You know, this is cool. It's awesome. It makes you feel good. It sure does. I mean, organization does too. Like my buddy... He told me, you got to make your bed in the morning because yes. clean bed equals clean head. Clean bed equals clean head. That's right. Yeah. I mean, there's a reason they say that cleanliness is next to godliness. It's like clutter is, I feel like I'm not a huge believer in the energy of like objects or things like that, but they do pull you in mental directions that, you know what I mean? I could be coming in here and getting right down to the computer and getting to work, but when I see the garbages need to be changed or this or that, I'm not ready to sit down and work yet like or i could choose to ignore those things which mm -hmm. is not great either so having a plan for dealing with them is really key mm -hmm. um but then again you know i don't want to overthink things in life either like my dad he never really said it but i feel like his philosophy or one of his philosophies was that there's not many problems you can't s solve with with, with the hard work you like there's a lot of things in life where you just if you get down to it and do what you got to do and get your shit right and get organized mm -hmm. You're, you'll be in a better place. Mm -hmm. um, tell us about when you meditate, is there a certain time of day? Are there multiple times of day? How long do you like to do it for at a given time? What do you find that works for you? I First thing in the morning and before I go to bed. Um, first thing in the morning, because I wanted to have a really good day. So I'll meditate, I'll, I'll write down what I have going on for the day. Um, do I have anything going on during the week? Um, so I look at that. Um, do I have a lot of thoughts running through my head um, compared to eight years ago? No, because I think I've learned through the years how to work 
with everything that I need to get done. Um, so I keep it organized. Um, before I go to bed, I like to meditate. And the things that I think about or I write out is how my day went. What was the best part of my day? Not what's the, the worst thing about my day. What was the best part of my day? Because if I go to bed knowing that I had a really good day, I'm going to wake up having, you know, inspiration and motivation. And I'll wake up happy. And that's what's important to me. So I'm like, I'm out there ready to kill it, you know? <laughs> well, you need to be the best person you be you can be. And the world needs you to be the best person you can be as mm -hmm. well. You know, whether it's your family or your clients or just the person who's getting your coffee in the morning at Dunkin' yes. Donuts or something like Yes. I, I just feel good when I, you know, you try to make everybody feel like they're somebody or they're important or just, I recognize that for the most part, we as human beings are equals, you know, like titles and money and shit like that. I think it's a lot of bullshit that it's between you and somebody else. Like, can you make a connection with anybody anywhere you go? And I feel that mm -hmm. that's something I've sharpened for a long time in my life as well. But yeah. in terms of meditation, it sounds like, you kind of start the day on a good note and then you end it on a good note mm -hmm. as well. Yeah, I want a good night's rest. That's super important too for mental mm -hmm. health. Like there's been days where I'll go some, through something and it caused me so much stress. And if I get a good night's sleep, I'm just like, well, you know what? That sucked, but let's deal with that shit, you know? Mm -hmm. Well, I see clients all day. So at nighttime, as I like get a second wind from my clients, every session goes extremely well. And I get this, you know, second wind and it's like, oh my God, I don't know if I can go to sleep right now. <laughs> cause it keeps me up. Cause I keep thinking about, um, wow, they had their aha moment. And, you know, can I record this session so that I can go home and listen to that? That makes me feel so good. Um, and then the next session that we have, you know what? I, I listened to myself again and this is what I learned from that session. So, so you, re you record your sessions? I if they want to do that well yeah of course with permission mm -hmm. it's it's just for listeners out there it's illegal in Illinois and it's varies from state to state whether you have a one party consent state or a two party That's consent right. state so yes you do have to but I feel like that would be very helpful if the people who do say yes if you can go back and do some after action review you think about oh there's something I could have added in or I could be better organized this way or something mm -hmm. like that well I feel that when my clients or any client um, goes into a session, they go in with um, nervousness. You know, how is this, how is the session gonna go? Did I, you know, did I talk too much? Was I not listening enough? Um, so they leave kind of feeling confused maybe, or just stuck on the one thing that made them feel good about the session. And then, you know, their thought process is going like, Oh my God, what was I supposed to do? What did she say? Um, so I, I take out, I take notes all the time. So if my clients are not recording the session, then I have my, my notes that are typed out and then I'll email it to them if they need it. Damn, I feel like you're organized, but that's also labor intensive too. Yeah, but it's, but it makes, I, I don't know, to me it feels good because I know they're asking for a reason because it's making them feel good and it's making them think and they're they're moving forward. If they weren't asking me those questions or suggesting things or whatever have you, I would just, you know, is it really working for them? Because they have to be honest and you have right. to be deep, you know, so. You have um, to be open and which people feel uncomfortable with sometimes because it makes mm -hmm. you vulnerable. You're dealing with the deepest things, the obstacles that you face. And you don't want to look weak in front of people, people, I feel. And that's probably why some people are reluctant to share, mm -hmm. you know, their real thoughts and their feelings. Yeah. There, we, during, even before I blah, 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 I get all excited talking about meditation <laughs> and my clients. Yeah. But before my sessions, if a client had, um, you know, called me or texted me and said, can, before our session, can we meditate? Yes. Come 10 minutes before. Um, and I always... Um, block out 30 minutes after my session um, for myself. Um, so if we wind up doing it after the session, we have that 10 minutes to, to meditate or five, um, depending on how long, you know, they want to meditate or whatnot. What are the time blocks of sessions that you offer? Um, it's for one hour. Okay. Um, sometimes it goes over. Um, I've done it for about an hour and a half. 
And it's only because I want them to leave feeling good about themselves. I want them to leave feeling good about the session. How many do you do on a, what would be a, considered like a full day for you of, of sessions? Three, four? Um, anywhere between four to six clients a day. Okay. Because you have to block off a little bit of time in between them for, you know, well, launch I do, or I, Well, I do the 30 self-care. minute. Yeah, I do the 30 minutes because I don't know if the session's going to go over. If it doesn't go over, that's great, you know, whatever have you. Then I have time to type out my session notes so I don't have to do it all at the end of the day. So, yeah, you so you make it half hour of discussion, picking up where you left off from last time with your notes, kind of revisiting, and then seeing where they're at with the goals that you guys set out from mm-hmm. the prior session. Mm-hmm. And, and then you have a half hour after that half hour to take down your notes. And, yes, exactly. And may, or maybe build in some meditation time with the client. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and guess what? All the sessions are whiteboarded. <laughs> I whiteboard everything in my session. <laughs> Just putting it right out there for them? Yeah. It's like a I, vision board almost like here it is. Take a look. Well, it's more so because I feel that it's important that you see what you're thinking and you see what you're saying because you could be saying one thing and maybe meaning another but if it's if I'm doing all the writing and they're talking and they see exactly what they're saying and where they're at in their life it gives them a different perspective of what's going on so then we kind of just you know break it down and put the pieces together put the puzzle pieces together if you will yeah yeah. The the one person I was listening to on meditation said that they've been they did studies on it and they were looking at mental benefits as well as the physical mm-hmm. health benefits of meditation. And she explained it so well that that I started to to become a believer myself. Mm-hmm. I think what she was saying out of the studies that they did, it seems to be what they've seen probably the what they think by their standards is the best results is meditation three times a day for 12 minute sessions per per meditation session so Hmm. one in the morning i guess maybe one at some point during your day sometimes that's hard for me because i won't be i won't have the time or be in the office i think i like your method of beginning the day and end of the day and i think that i just um when i get up i need to just that's the first thing i do i've been trying to do that with exercise because for me, I feel like exercise is kind of a form of meditation. It cer- certainly makes you feel better because, you know, they have this stuff that's like they call runner's high, and that's a real mm-hmm. thing. It you is a thing. You feel it. It releases different endorphins and probably yes. hormones in your body, and you just feel better. So I think my New Year's will be 12 minutes of meditation and maybe 20 to 25 minutes of exercise in the morning. But the tough part for me is waking up in the morning. Um, I have sleep apnea, and when I do get into a sleep it's usually pretty deep so for me i've never been like a morning person gotcha and some people are some people aren't it's just the way you're wired uh and i know that i was there's another book uh that i kind of put down i started listening to an audiobook and then i bought a physical paper copy of it called why we sleep and um and so they just explained that some people are some people are more inclined to be a night person or a morning person i'm probably more of a night person but now I just feel like an old person because mm-hmm. I can't stay up late and getting up early is also hard for me. So mm-hmm. like the older I get, the the harder it is. Like I used to, you know, I'd go out, hang out, party till like two, three in the morning yes. and then, then I'd go to work yes. or whatever. It was no big deal. And now I'm kind of like, you know, 10, 11 o'clock rolls around and I'm pretty much ready to go to bed, you know? Yeah. It's like Even the night world. <laughs> yeah. It's tough. Like I what i what i don't get I, I don't know if what it is you know who knows i've had the vaccine i've had you know so many things go on with my life my health that i'm like why is it that i don't have that what i used to have because i used to be able to stay up like almost all night if i needed to or i'd stay up pretty late and then i'd go to bed hmm. you know i could stay up working and stuff now I, sometimes i look at the computer and i think about like the problem that i have to solve for this client or whoever it is and i'm like man, I just don't have the energy to do this right now. I'm like, you know what? I'll go to bed and try to wake up early in the morning to, to work on it. But 
the older I get, the more I realize how time flies. Like, if you got a routine in the morning, you want to brush your teeth, shower up, or whatever, mm-hmm. you better hope you have your clothes ready and shit the night before, mm-hmm. and like anything else you need to do, because all that stuff takes time, especially in the morning. It's more of a pressure situation. You're not at your best yet. When you first wake up, you're like stumbling around, and your balance is yes. off and shit, and you need to. Well, see, that's where that's the perfect time for meditation. Then, so you, everything that you had just said about the client. Oh, I don't want, I don't know when I want to do this or whatever have you. You should get that off of your mind. You know, put it on your whiteboard or Don't be afraid of saying that word. <laughs> or your journal and journal it out. Um monthly planner, so date it and then get your clothes together, you know, whatever have you and then once you're all done doing that, then you can sit and you can meditate. I'm going to do my best to get the clothes ready the night before, but there's so much stuff to do. Like, even when we're done with this podcast, in order to get this, like, you know, YouTube ready or, you know, Spotify ready, I have to transfer, um, I have to transfer the video. For first of all, I have to put it in, into the editing software and I have to enlarge the screen size because the screen size when it comes off of here is much smaller. It looks like. Oh, wow. Dumb or whatever. So I have to enlarge it. I have to do a custom size to put it full screen. And then after that, I have to turn it into an MP4 format, which okay. which is what I put on YouTube. It's high definition video. Um, and then for the auto, you have to do MP3 format. So I change it into an MP3. Wow. It's a lot of work. It is. Yeah. That's why like, I know how to do this stuff, but the timing part of it is rough. You know what I mean? And that's why I mentioned before we started that I'm going to find somebody online who there's basically these websites where you can find people who provide, you know, like independent services that they offer. Mm -hmm. I'm going to find somebody to break this down into clips because I wanted to do it myself, but it's like, you got to sit there and listen to an hour of audio, two hours of audio, two and a half hours of audio, depending on how long the conversation goes. And I, I never put limits on it. I never, this is just a conversation. We go where the river takes us. It should flow. I don't need to have some rigid thing and we could we sit there sound like robots. All right, topic one. And then we move on to the next one. It's like, is this class? I mean, kind of. It's a bus life university or whatever. But I want it to be more flowing, more conversational. Mm-hmm. But to, to to the earlier point is that, yeah, I have to get into a video format. That's one that takes a while. Usually what I'll do is I'll run the laptop like overnight and have it converting to MP4 because it oh, takes several idea. hours of time. The MP3 one for the audio is super easy. That one's done in like five, ten minutes. Hmm. That one, once uh, once you hit, you know, click to, to turn it into MP3, just the audio, audio is like. That's awesome. Yeah, it's much easier. So some people like the, the visual stuff to actually watch it on YouTube. They want to see you while you're saying what you're saying. It gives them a picture of their mind's eye because otherwise sometimes there's things that aren't satisfied. Like a visual is power. We connect with pictures and vision. Yes. And, and that's why Facebook and Instagram personal. are all so popular right now. Yeah. But uh, yeah, and then you once you get it ready for audio, then you got to upload it to those sites. That's another one. Like uploading a two hour video to YouTube, that's another one that takes almost all night. So if we're doing this podcast on a Sunday, which we are, mm-hmm. um, I'll have it converted to MP4 by tomorrow. And then um, I'll have it uploaded to YouTube by, t- uh, you know, Tuesday. And then I'll have it like scheduled to release probably Wednesday morning. Wow. Yeah. There's a lot of steps involved. And another thing is, um, I have about 1,500 people on a mailing list. They include past clients. They include um, realtors, uh, lenders, different people I work with. You're on the list, and it'll tell them, like, New Blue Podcast, you know, check it out on YouTube and the following. It's on every major podcast site. I'm a person who likes to check off boxes, uh, and I like to be as thorough as possible. Like, why would I miss out on that opportunity when I can, you know, put it yeah. on there? So this is on everything from Apple to Amazon to Spotify to Google Podcasts, yes. Deezer, all these ones that you, like the hip young kids probably know yeah. about that, that I never heard of until I started doing this. But I want yeah, to cast might as well a wide go net. to the high school and ask one of the kids to do this. I mean, I could. Right? You know what I mean? Like, you, you can actually, like, if you needed assistance with, like, audio and visual stuff, there's probably plenty of, you know, hungry young students down at Columbia College who could assist. Yes. Um, but then, then there's a high school right over here. And the funny thing is, a lot of high schools, people don't know this. If you have a business or something you need help with, um, I mean, it has to be pretty much a business or whatever, or some kind of community organization. They will set up internships where 
these kids will just help you just to kind of get some real world experience. Yes. But uh, in my case, I think I'm going to go like the, you know, one of those website routes. So one of my friends gave me a few that he uses to find people who will connect him with this kind of stuff and just make sure the person's paid decently and that, you know, I have something broken down where I can use it because it takes it takes a long time wow. to sit there and timestamp that stuff and then go back and then use the video editing software to pull out just that chunk and all that. It's doable, but it's I just don't have it's the time lot. for all that. I tried. I like to have knowledge of how to do things in case I need to do them. I just don't have the time, you know. Mm-hmm. And that's part of that, you know, business and personal plan I wrote down is communication is key in everything. It's one of the things that drives things along. And so I find that I'll ask somebody about something or I'll just mention it to them, hey, this is one of the things I'm dealing with. Like, oh, I do that. I'll, I'll help you out, no problem. But whether it's my wife or maybe, you know, people, my staff or friends of mine, you discover so much in like easier ways to do things or people that can do stuff for you. And then I got to start thinking about just who do I delegate it to in order mm-hmm. to get this done. Like mm-hmm. my wife helped me making doctor's appointments and stuff recently because the only calls I'm taking when I'm here, is, you know, for the most part is just business stuff. Yeah. So... I need help with stuff like that, but at least I got my business plan out, my personal plan, and well, at least you're you're reaching out to ask for that help. A lot of people don't do that, so that's important, and it's good that you're doing it. Yeah, I feel like um, some people are afraid to ask, or they don't even know to mm-hmm. ask, or they feel like they're being a burden on other people. Yes, but sometimes, like I've gotten to a point in my life where you got to pay to play. You know what I mean? And mm-hmm. what I mean by that is like. You know, when I was a kid, it was like, oh, well, if you can do it yourself, you know, just save the money and blah, blah, blah. It's like, well, what about the time part of it? Time has a cost too, right? I can take what I made last year, Mm -hmm. divide it by the number of hours in the year, and then take the average. Like, that's what you make per hour. If it's going to, if I could be making more money working on my business stuff, then it's not worth it for me to be trying to do it myself. Like, am I going to go out there and freeze my ass under the car trying to do the oil change? No. The... Luckily, the local place over here on the south side, they know how to treat you right on the south side and they'll overcharge you. They don't overcharge you. Get my whole change done for like 30 bucks. You go in one of these corporate places, they basically like it's take like you $70. against your will and like, to, yeah. Oh, well, we noticed the bulbs out too. That's only like 30 bucks. We'll put that on there. Oh, your wipers are streaking a little bit. Like, I went in for oil change, spent 100 goddamn dollars. It's like, I don't have money for this stuff. Like, just do the oil change. I'll friggin' worry about the wipers, you yes. know, whatever. Well, I mean, you want new wipers on in the winter. We just went through our first snow here yeah. in Chicago, Illinois, United States of America. America. <laughs> America. <laughs> You're still the greatest country in the world, but how long will it last? Mm. Forever. I hope so, but we got to work for that. That shit doesn't and stay that o- way. But that's okay. We got to uh, keep so. each other up. Say word, sister, and it starts here at the Blessed Life University. That's we right. got to spread the good word about, you know, taking care of yourself first and then taking care of your community and speaking up. Um, one thing that I'm going to be speaking up, or one thing, multiple things that I will be speaking up about is uh, tax reform, uh, reform in policing, and reforming also in the U.S. Mm-hmm. military because a lot of these things have been perverted into something that they were never intended to be or right. – um, or that they should not be, right? Right. Um, so that's that's a story for another time. And I think you said your friend uh-huh. uh, might have some insights to offer on that. Most definitely. Um, so hopefully um, we'll get him scheduled for next Saturday or Sunday. That would be awesome. That'd be Bring really it on. Great. Yeah. I'd love to hear what he has to say, meet yeah. him. And, and how long have you known this uh, friend of yours? Um, for a very long time. Okay. We work together. Okay. Yeah. So you've known him for a while now. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's good because you'll have a good flow and yeah. maybe. So I, I think with what you had just said, um, if people stay away from the news, stop listening to that because everyone has, the news has their opinion, their likes and dislikes on, on the whole politic thing. And they're scaring, sorry, scaring no the daylights out of people. Stay away from the news. Listen to podcasts like this. Get insights from podcasts. This is this is amazing, and I think this is the way to go. I think this should be our new world. It it seems to be heading truth. that way in some sense. Yeah, and yeah. this is this is more conversational. This is everyday people, and you you may not disagree, but it's there's not an agenda here. I'm not being backed by Pfizer mm-hmm. or any of this other bullshit that you hear all over the mm-hmm. you know commercials. This news program bought you by Pfizer mm-hmm. uh, or or anything else. You know, 
there's been a lot of division in this country and it's really over stupid frivolous stuff i feel they're trying to divide us on the basis of race which is the stupidest thing ever um economic grounds where all all arrows are working against us you know as a people as you know we we had a middle class in this country and mm -hmm. they've basically taken that away from us so they realized that money is power yeah exactly. and we were getting too powerful and so now we are left with just service jobs we're not making goods anymore and we've seen how vulnerable we were as a country mm -hmm. when the coronavirus hit and we had companies that were making products in china and unless we shut up about the origins of the coronavirus and things like that they weren't letting those shipments leave their ports until we quieted down about it yeah it's a very humbling thing as the greatest country in the world to have to um bow down and mm -hmm. um stay quiet yeah I about think stuff it, like that yeah i think it's so important if um people engage um with the podcast I, I and engaging meaning you know leave your comments um let us go ahead and and respond to that but it has to be in a healthy respectful and right and not a hateful type of way um because no hate is allowed not here you yeah know? i'll either delete it or i just won't read it the positive stuff i like to hear it's like hey keep Most on doing definitely. this i find this helpful or yeah. i agree with what you said but if it's gonna be some weasel that's just talking shit or calling names or saying your stuff sucks you're like i i don't have we don't have room or time i don't have a that. fraction of a second for that i really don't and yeah. i i will look the other way or delete it if you know can you imagine the, the people who have the time to stop and be negative and try to drag you down that concerns me and they do have some issues you know they need help with but if they're going to only show me negativity i don't have time to scratch the surface with whatever's right. going on with them you know what i mean yeah so especially because part of the unhealthy thing about today's life is the negativity that goes on behind a screen um you know most people wouldn't talk to each other that way in person but right. they will say some nasty shit online and it's just like yeah. it's like grade school stuff you know it's well, kind of like bullying you know? most definitely and i would hope that if someone didn't agree with someone they with something that we had said that they would respond with or re, you know reply with i mean no disrespect and don't want to argue but i i did not agree with what i heard um this is how i feel and and leave it at that because that's okay, you know. Everyone should be able to have their own opinion on things, and um, we will learn and grow from each other. Yeah, um, constructive criticism is yeah. good, mm -hmm. or some input of like, oh, here's something you should have mentioned that you didn't. That's fine. Yes, as long as they're doing it in good faith. Most. I don't definitely. want people who are just like, hey, let me like try to make them feel like they're dumb or that they're, mm -hmm. you know, or they don't have value. It's like we know that, otherwise we wouldn't be where we're at today. So. Mm -hmm. If you see that, I know that's fake currency. That's fake fucking yes. news. I don't buy into that shit. Yeah. Because I am where I'm at, I'm at in my life because I've been a good person and mm -hmm. because I've worked hard. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I don't buy into that. But if there was something constructive that somebody would say and, you know, maybe it could help by responding or yeah. acknowledging that, then great. But anybody who's not operating in good faith, I, I don't have time for. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Um, we're all entitled to our opinion. Um, keep it positive. Um, I don't know, keep it friendly and work on what's going on in this world together. It'll make us stronger. Yeah, I, I direct my energy in a way that I'm trying to make my life better, yes. your life better, my friends, my family, um, not to try to drag somebody down. Unfortunately, there's too much of that. It's cheap. It's it's out there too much. Yeah. Um, to your point, uh, I mentioned Naval Ravikant earlier, and he was saying exactly basically what you're saying. In this modern world, the way to have peace is to disconnect from from society a bit. There's too much society, if you will. You know, you don't have the 24-hour news cycle. You have yes. You have social media. You have these, you know, supercomputers that are constantly bombarding with alerts yes. and messages and things like that. And we were not meant to be bombarded with you know constant input and constant information mm -hmm. and constant drama. As, as a people like that's not how we evolved and grew over time so this is really new to us mm -hmm. what we're going through now yeah it definitely is and um i think we lost and i, I think it's the generation like the 30 you know something year old generation lost the ability to communicate in a very personable way because they're so used to texting um 
in emailing or whatever have you. That's their form of communication. I've had so many people um, say, oh, how is so-and-so doing? Or, you know, blah, blah. I don't know. Why don't you call and find out how they're doing and then have a conversation? Um, stay off the phone. You know, unless you're going to call someone and say, hey, I haven't heard from you in a while. I just wanted to say hello, see how you're doing. I love those. And quite honestly, I've been blessed that I have a good core of group of people in my life. But also, I've connected with and touched the lives of many people um, over the past few years. I've had a couple of thousand clients, you know, 2,000, 3,000. I don't know. I, I haven't really kept track, but I do know that it's up there. Mm -hmm. um, and so... I've had, you know, the pleasure of getting to know them, but also that presents more and more opportunity. The more people you know, you know, the more people you can be calling. But I, I believe it is important to check in on the people that are most important in your life. Your mom, your, you know, my aunt. I got to call my aunt a little bit more. I have one up in Canada right now. Her, her husband passed. Uh, who was my last, my father's last living brother? He passed of coronavirus in a nursing home. And um, you know, that we was when it first happened. COVID, right? You was early on, yeah. yeah. They got a case of COVID that ran its course throughout the entire nursing home, and some people did die, and my uncle was one of them. And it was sad because mm -hmm. he, his mind was damaged from strokes and stuff, but he was still there. He had healed over time, and he did make a bit of recovery with physical therapy and mental therapy. But it was the coronavirus that took him, uh, you know, in the end of the day. Um, yeah, so, so sorry about that. Yeah, it was it was sad, and you know, in the early days, we didn't know how to treat COVID. Um, now we are getting to the point where uh, we are there's more there's people out there that are vocal about early treatment, mm -hmm. giving somebody hydroxychloroquine when they've been ravaged by COVID for three weeks is not really going to do much. It's you need stuff like that early on. Mm -hmm. You need a signal of benefit and acceptable safety, Goodbye. and that's. That's what they weren't doing for a long time, I believe, in order to promote max vaccination. And, I mean, you can speak to us personally about, you know, losing a job over not getting vaccinated. And it's pretty sad because the truth about the vaccines are is you can still get COVID yeah. uh, while you have the vaccine and you can still spread it as well. So yeah. I my buddy was telling me they're worried about workman's comp claims. Um, and I'm like... I, you know, as an attorney, I don't know workman's comp. I could probably grasp the basics of it pretty quickly if somebody mm -hmm. explained it to me. Mm -hmm. But in fact, I might actually have a workers' comp attorney uh, to kind of talk about workers' comp and its interaction with coronavirus or the coronavirus interaction with workers' comp and see what's what and what they believe is true and what's not. It'd be interesting to know. That, that. would definitely be interesting because I hear a lot um, that if you are if your company is not mandating the vaccine um, and you do wind up getting COVID and you have to self-quarantine for two weeks and I believe they shorten that time now, You, it's without pay. So if you have insurance or not, you're, you don't get paid um, if you wind up getting COVID. You know um, what that sounds like to me? Hmm. That sounds like a recipe for people to go to school sick. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Yeah. But... If you're not if you're not going to get covered or compensated for that time off, like people probably coming, oh, I've got a headache, but I can work. Mm -hmm. You know. Yeah. Well, then you had just mentioned even if you're vaccinated, you're still going to get COVID. And so if you get COVID, even though you're vaccinated and you have to stay home to quarantine. You still get paid for that, but the unvaccinated person doesn't. Oh, yeah, they're saying like, okay, well, that's a difference. Yeah, and I mean, it's an unfair treatment, I guess, between, yeah. or at least there's a distinction, right? There's a distinction in treatment of, you know, how they're treating people who were vaccinated and how, how they weren't. And, like, as far as how I stand on the vaccine, I am vaccinated, and, you know, it's my understanding that you you get a more mild case of COVID, Um you know, if you've been vaccinated, but there are variants that I think they said Delta is resistant to the effects of the the vaccination. So, you know, obviously we have that Omicron now that is supposed to be a more mild case. Um, if you get it, it's it's supposed to be less severe. But they, I think they said Delta is, is resistant mm -hmm. actually to it just it can somehow has this way of bypassing whatever proteins or whatever that are in the, the vaccine that are supposed to target or prevent you from getting a severe case of COVID. Yeah. See, and 
that's what we're talking right now. Supposed to be, supposed to be, you know, it could be. And and that's what's so hard and probably for many listeners who that who don't believe in the vaccine. Um, that, yeah, it's supposed to be, but it's not. Because we're all still learning about this stuff. Exactly. Um, you and know that's what I mean? why we can't get in, into our heads about all of that, you know. Um, just respect each other, love each other. Um, whether they're vaccinated or not vaccinated, you're going to be okay. We're all going to be okay. We just got to stay strong together and um, be positive through it. We do, and we're, we're getting there. This this will not last forever, um, but I it concerns me that this could be kind of a test run for something bigger, and I've never been a conspiracy theorist. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I didn't even believe in fake news, you know, when Trump was saying stuff about that, but I kind of do now. I see, you know, I talk about something, the phone hears it, and it shows up in my news yes. feed. And I do like to review my news, but there's sometimes where I look at those articles, and I can tell just by the headline that it's, you, you, right away it's clickbait, or even then, if it, you, you, you can actually see that this is, that's not accurate. And you do have to, like, go somewhere else to check it, because you're like, that's not even, that's not even factually accurate, I, or I don't believe it. Right. Because... One thing they taught us in law school was to view things through what they call the reasonable person lens. Mm -hmm. And you have to kind of reason out, like, based on your knowledge of this life and the facts at hand, like, is that reasonable? And unfortunately, there's been so much stuff that's that's true that's hard to believe or stuff that's not true where you you have to try to spot it, whether it's correct or not. Unfortunately, that's... Yeah, that's why the I, world we live in now, it's fuckery. You have to really work hard to figure out what's accurate and what's real news, you know? Yeah, that's why I mentioned, you know, start listening to podcasts. Get away from the whole social media bit. Because um, at least we're honest when we have a conversation. Yes. We're just flushing out stuff that we've heard and evaluating it. That's all we're doing here. Yep, exactly. We're not trying to force somebody to think a certain way or be a vaxxer or be an anti-vaxxer, right? That's another division within society. It should be we're Americans and you're free to, to, to make the choice and – Here's what yes. doctors have been doing out there who've been treating COVID patients because the vaccine is not a treatment. Yeah, it's supposed to be a preventative or it's supposed to reduce symptoms, but it's not a treatment. You don't you don't go in there with COVID and then you oh well we'll give you the vaccine shot. In fact, I had friends who got the first shot and then they end up getting full blown COVID because they had been exposed yes. to the, to COVID and then when they got the shot, it, it it really awakened in their system. It was no longer dormant, and so. You yeah. know, that's they, they don't treat you with a vaccine. They have to have other medicines out there, right? We know there's stuff out there right now. Yeah. We'll talk more about that on these podcasts as time goes on. But monoclonal antibodies, that one's huge. Those are safe and effective. They're used, uh, they make they make it for mice, and they do this all in the laboratory, and they can multiply them and make millions of them or billions of them yeah. and distribute them. Those are safe and, safe and effective treatment. It doesn't, we don't know the, the side effects of these vaccines. Like, we're going to be learning this over time, and we do know that there's children out there that are getting myocarditis, they're having yeah. swelling on their heart. Um, and it's not just children. It's, it's older it, people as well, but, yes. but they've been seeing it more, or maybe it has been more emphasized when it happens to children. It would be great to have a nurse or a doctor on I would love to, but the tough part about that is they're reluctant to go on sometimes, and they really have to watch it because the institutions that they work for yeah. or that they, you know, whatever, they have to – they can get in trouble like you don't want them to be getting called in their hr or their legal department later like what the fuck is this we saw you on very true some youtube video like you signed this agreement when you started or whatever of course they can't talk about specific patient facts or anything we wouldn't yeah, even ask them to do that me. oh let me pause it for a second okay. <laughs> we disappeared for a second now we're back but we're back we are back we're back <laughs> we back so uh let's do this you're doing some stuff with meditation and you're planning on uh teaching classes um well i would i am how do i say it it's not just meditation it's meditation and mindfulness how they come play and play with each other and i want to be able to um talk about that and why it's important in our lives and I want to do that with high school kids. I want to do that with college students. So I'm coming up with a PowerPoint presentation to present to the schools and um, and then get in to these schools, do these you know speaking engagements, 
and do a Q&A with the kids. I want to make sure that they know what meditation and mindfulness means and how it's going to work for them um, throughout their school years. And I also want them to know um, that, you know, being a life coach and me talking about meditation and mindfulness, that life coaching is also an outlet for them. And so they may not want to go to their um, their peers to say, hey, I'm going through this and I don't know how to move forward or get out of what I'm in now. And I, I'm overwhelmed with all my homework. I can't stay organized, things like that. Meditation and mindfulness is a key aspect to being able to um, really stay focused or to get focused. So that's what that's my new thing for 2022. Um, going in talking to students about that. So I'm really excited. I I can't wait to get that rolling and going and. Um, talked to a lot of college students and they said that, yeah, most definitely that would be something that we need. We need to hear stuff like that. We don't have it at school. They don't teach it at school. Um, so that's the avenue that I want to go this year. Would this be part of physical education or at what point would this come in uh, during the day? Well, anytime that they have um, any speakers come in, so they would, like a high school would probably be physical education, right? It could um, be. It doesn't have to be, I don't exactly. think. Exactly. And I'll, that remind me something I'll tell you in a minute when you're, when you're, um, okay. when we explore this thought. Sure. And then with college, it, you know, speakers come in all the time um, to talk to students and things like that. So it can be any time of the day. I would like to do it first thing in the morning. Um, before lunch hour, because I want to see how many students actually say, you know what, I'm going to use my free time right now to actually meditate and see if this works for me, you know, and if it doesn't work for them, they're more than happy to reach out to me. So. Well, um, I, ho I hope that you have a lot of success doing that, and I believe that uh, the kids will benefit from it. And so, um, hopefully that that goes uh, gets off the ground and I have a friend um, she's a teacher at a high school down here um, on the south side and it's a good school I actually want to speak to their students before as well um, they, they just want to have me in as attorney kind of tell them what what my job is like um, you know having my own business and what it is I do on a daily basis so I think she, it's my friend Monica she's a teacher there I'm sure that if you wanted to speak to her classes, she could kind of yeah, get you in the door great. if you'd like. Because, I, I mean, she got me in there, and, you know, um, I'm sure she could get you in as well. Yeah, that would be awesome. As a place to start, because do, you know, do you know the places you want to do this at? Like, what schools? Um, I want to go to, like, Loyola University, Northwestern, um, University of Chicago, as far as... Um, colleges are concerned right. um, as far as far as high schools any high schools that are around because it's great <coughs> it's great for the kids Pardon to me. learn young you know so they're in high school freshmen you know sophomore senior or junior senior year or they're going into college they they now know that this is part of their life and so going into college they're going to be implementing that into their daily um, while being in college, that's you know huge and important. Yeah, yeah. I wish I, I had it when I was younger. Mm -hmm. um, mindfulness, more focus on education. Like we said earlier, there's a lot of things that would be very helpful for people to know um, in terms of life skills that they just don't really teach in a school. And it'd be good to see more maybe mental health based classes that would involve stuff like meditating and things like that i mean yeah and, and this is not like a religion issue it's like it's just that's just general for people's mental health i don't know why there people would have a problem with that you know yeah in short mindfulness is about being in the present moment and in a and not judging yourself you a lot of people we judge ourselves we're our worst critics and so um being in you know that mindful uh, mindfulness mind state is really important and you have to do it with purpose you know with a goal behind it and you don't judge yourself don't judge you know the things that are around you 
So be present, be focused, be positive. For me, I have been more mindful um, as time goes on. I think yoga helped with that as well. But part of it for me is to um, avoid emotional reactions, um, to not go maybe necessary with my first reaction, mm-hmm. and turn down my mind's voice, if that makes sense. Like what I do is I turn my mind's voice down where instead of acting on, acting on the environment, I'm listening to it more. And so, you know, it allows me to be calm and to stop my motion and slow things down Mm -hmm. and then just turn down my mind's voice like I could get distracted by something and divert off onto that thing for a half hour or an hour and or instead I could not have an emotional reaction not let the power or the emotion I feel dictate what direction I'm going to go into and just focus on the task and stay disciplined and focused I feel that's what mindfulness is to me and what it helps me do yes Yes, that's definitely what that is. Turn that mind's voice down and just listen to things without reacting so much. Or judgment. Mm-hmm. Without judging it. And I've, judgment is a very draining mental process. There's a lot of them drama is as well. And uh, you have to be mindful of the amount of energy you have to put into it. You have to concentrate pretty deeply on those things. And it's mentally costly. It zaps a lot of energy. Mm-hmm. So I try to try to manage my emotions and not make decisions uh, based on emotion. Um, Try to disconnect emotion from the business that I am in a bit. Mm -hmm. And just, it allows me to focus more on solving the problem instead of dwelling on the problem itself, which is super helpful. You really, sometimes when you're stuck with something, maybe you could solve the puzzle before it becomes a problem, or at least you could deal with the problem a lot better if you're mindful, you know, without being emotional, without judging, without to just turn that put the brakes on your mind's voice for a second and just observe so important and college students need to understand that um so you know a lot of college students going into um you know finals and things like that and you know they have that test anxiety and they're like oh my god i can't sleep and i can't think and i can't study and whatever have you and you know what happens they you know xanax and drinking and all this stuff adderall is what they yeah, used to Adderall. take when there I was go. in college. Adderall is like their best friend. Yeah. But if they only knew a little bit of mindfulness and meditation might yes. so eliminate the yes. need for the Adderall then probably exacerbate your anxiety as time goes on as well, especially if you didn't do well. Very holistic. The, the Adderall is supposed to be like crack cocaine. I've never tried it. Never tried it. And I'm, I'm glad I never tried it. Um, it is addicting. It's addiction. One addiction leads to another. So, yeah. Yeah, I never tried it. They talked about it a lot in college and, you know, even in law school after that. But Mm -hmm. although I had ADD, I started reading about it. And they said that as you grow older, you become more cognizant of it and you're able to manage it better accordingly. Mm -hmm. So I never really needed to try uh, Adderall, but I did work at being focused. Mm -hmm. When I first took the law exam, it was seven points below where I wanted it to be Um, and what I did was I just took practice exams I would block off time and I go the weekend it would be under time conditions you know half hour per segment and you know maybe a little yeah couple minutes in between that and the next one and and I sharpened my mind into that to being more mindful and to managing the time Mm -hmm. the marathon part of part of taking exams and um, when I was focused, I realized I didn't have the anxiety as much, so I could focus. Because when I was younger, if I had a test and I, I wasn't confident in my math or my science, I'd be checking that clock every few minutes, seeing how much time I have because I'm so scared of the material. It's causing me to panic mm-hmm. and freak out. Whereas now I am calm, cool, collect. I stop. I breathe. I yes. listen to things and what it's really trying to tell me, mm-hmm. as opposed to putting my own commentary on it mentally, um, mm-hmm. so that I can focus better. Yeah, not reacting the, with emotion. Yeah, and part of that too is focusing on you. You are doing this test for you, and we had talked about that in the last um, segment um, that we had, um, or the last podcast that we had. I remember. Yeah, you have to go in doing this test for you, not thinking, "Oh my God, if I 
if I don't pass this, I'm going to disappoint someone. Don't talk to people about when your finals are. Focus on yourself. Focus on what you need to do. And obviously bring in that meditation and mindfulness with it. I can't wait to start meditating. Mm -hmm. I'm going to take my shit to the next level. You watch. Yeah. That little bit of yoga and exercise. Hell um, yeah. Was there anything else you wanted to let us know about your New Year's project? You're going to have a nice PowerPoint presentation for for high schools and colleges. Um, yeah. That will, that will have you there. I could ask around at John Marshall and see if they'd be interested in that like, would be a, great. like a lunch and learn type of thing yeah. one day just mm -hmm. to give them a presentation and say like, you know, I know this is a stressful time, and you yeah. might think this is a joke, but it ain't. You know, take the time because that's the one thing I do wish I did in law school more. I moved in with a good friend of mine, Matt, who will be on the podcast, and he's going to be moving here to practice law with me. He lives in Wisconsin currently, but um, he kind of motivated me to exercise more. Before I was let my body go, and even when I first got out into practice here, I did too. But I'm not going to do that anymore. Exercise is one of the few ways to keep your body young and to live longer. Mm -hmm. And um, like I say, I'm building a gym right now in the basement of this building and yes i have everything i need here which is one of the reasons i call this blessed life university is because i've worked hard to surround invest in the things in my life that will make it easier mm -hmm. and that will um that will uh, help me to grow it'll give me the ability to grow and ability to have peace of mind as well mm -hmm. um was there anything else you wanted to tell us about that project um, no, I'm done with that. But um, what you had just said reminded me of what I saw on your Facebook, your New Year's resolution, and yep. you had listed those. Yep. Um, I don't know if you saw my comment. I saw it. <laughs> and you're I like, oh my it. God, Kim. <laughs> well, it was kind of a mommy comment, but also like it was like, <laughs> here's what I do and listen to me because I will make sure that you are able to handle your problem if you start doing this. Yeah. You well, start... goals you hold, you hold, you hold my yourself accountable. My resolutions are goals. What's that? I was I was gonna comment back, but I figured we just chat about it uh, <laughs> on the podcast or in person or whatever. Um, is that those are goals to me? So like I know the the word is resolutions just because it is the season to yes, use okay, that word. Gotcha. That was kind of it. Okay, gotcha. But they're goals, right? Okay. To to exercise, it's and not even very much, just a little bit every day. And on the weekends when I have more time and the phone's mm -hmm. not ringing, that I can I'll take a good hour, hour and a half, two hours, and yeah. if I want to. But during the day, my my first goal of the year for 2022 is to do a little bit of exercise each day or at the very least every other day. I cannot go multiple days without doing it anymore. Um, that's goal number one. Number two um, is, you know, focusing on building new systems and providing better service because I will be able to provide better service because of the systems. I've already started working on that goal. So that is something now um, the next part of the goal is to implement it and, and adjust as I need to. I'm going to speak more on that one in a second. Number three resolution was just to be kind and respectful to people, um, which is an ongoing resolution because I've done that. Yeah, it's so continuous. Speak, yeah. I'll take each one of those in turn. So number two um, about implementing better systems so that I can provide better service. Mm-hmm. I had let somebody down recently. She's um, a good friend of mine, somebody I admire and respect, and she referred a couple of clients to me. And, uh, you know, during the busyness of the holidays, one of the clients left and they went with a different attorney. Mm. And it was weird because we didn't ignore them completely. We sent emails to them. We, you know, um, we sent an email to for a representation agreement so they know, like, what the process is like and what mm -hmm. to expect. And we sent out what we call an attorney review letter that contains modifications of the contract or, you know, um, requests further clarifications or disclosure on certain topics or whatever. Mm -hmm. So we had done those things, but the guy just, he hadn't heard from us. It was a week and a half in. I didn't have a chance to call him yet. December was a very busy month for me. Um, I had m many events, photos with Santa Claus, holiday parties, um, client appreciation. Everybody's doing these things, um, you know, for in the holidays. Um, and then doing all the closings on top of that. So I did, a, the, December was a very busy month. We closed a lot of transactions. Um, this fell through the cracks, you know? So one client mm -hmm. had left us and then with the same realtor, uh, there was a, we had sent a, one of those attorney review letters I told you about and the attorney responded the next day and it was late in the day on a Friday and we had a chaotic few weeks, like not just with all the events, that was what I had to do. Yeah. But we had one assistant who was out for a few days visiting family out of state 
her flight got delayed coming back. Um, so that caused some issues. And in the meanwhile, my new assistant, her son was sick and the daycare wouldn't take him with like stomach problems and stuff. Wow. And so we had a lot going on. And this Friday night hits, this guy responds to our letter at like almost five o'clock. And by that time, the girls are trying to get their last deadlines done. They got to extend mortgage deadlines in the contract. They have to send out attorney review letters or, you know, like inspection related repairs mm -hmm. and things we're asking for. So we missed that too. And when they went and circled back the week before, they didn't notice it. So I got a text from my friend and she told me, you know, I'm disappointed and you need to step it up. And so you ask and I will listen. How did I feel at first? I felt bad. I felt like I let her down and I felt like I wasn't living up to the standards of service I normally provide. And one thing that I, the, one of the reasons I made that a resolution is providing better services, but implementing newer systems. There's two systems that I'm going to be implementing. Number one, I am blocking time off where I will not be doing closings on a given day or whatever, where I have that okay. time where they know for sure I'm going to be in the office. I can review stuff that came in over the weekend, which sometimes walkers are crack, right? People have their own family life. My staff, they go home and they live their lives and they get stuff done they need to do for themselves or not working all the time. And sometimes, you know what I mean? It's better to send it on a Monday or not late in the day on a Friday when it might get overlooked, right? Um, and around the weekend as well. People, I think they expect this is like the 24-hour news cycle. You you know what I mean? They're hitting you with week, emails all weekend. And don't mm -hmm. get me wrong. I freaking love it when I see new client referrals coming in those. I was like, those emails, keep those coming. But all yeah. the other bullshit, let's talk about it on Monday, whatever. Yeah. But anyway, in terms of implementing systems, time blocking, but also I have this very powerful legal software that I use. Okay. And I have used that to make cheat sheets for every single file that I have. Nice. This one is my buyer files. Nice. It will, I will have all the information that I need about this transaction at my fingertips so that I can go in and use this as my guide, my checklist I of checking that. in our files. And the third page of it is a notes section. And so I'm going to be taking notes about things that I need to delegate to my assistant or, you know, noting a little call log. I called the client on this day and I spoke to him. Mm -hmm. And then I can say to the realtor, like, what else can I do? Because now I'm, you know, taking it to the next level. Um, right. So that's that, that hearing that from my friend, I did feel bad. I feel like I wasn't living up to my own standards. And so I'm correcting that there'll be a couple of other days. In addition, there's going to be one day that I'll always be doing the catch up. And then I'll have two days built into the month as well as another like catch up day as well. So that's my number two. Um, number three leads me to the things that I want to say at the end of a podcast. And I'm going to say every time. And that is whenever I deal with people, the way I've been able to connect with them and get along with them and be friends with them is I start from a position of respect and kindness, regardless of the race of the person. I believe that we should judge each other by the content of our character and not the color of our skin, just like Martin Luther King said. Yes. And so, um, I, who, no matter who it is, whether it's a person at Dunkin' Donuts or whoever, I, I always try to be you know, hey, how are you? You know, what's going on? You know, or a good morning, you know, and always try to be pleasant and start from that position. What I find is people you think, like if you were watching a movie, that they would never get along with each other as characters, you can be friends with those people. Right, most Or at definitely. least you can pass in peace or you might even learn something as you're talking to them. Mm -hmm. And so um, my life is blessed and it's more enriched because I do those kinds of things. And I believe it's possible for everybody. And I believe it, you know, at a time where everything we're going through with division on the vaccine and, and race and so many goddamn problems that I feel like they're using to weaken us. Yes. That we need to eliminate those divisions consciously as a people, be mindful of that and, and, and be a better people, be a stronger people. House Empower each other. Exactly, empower each other. A house divided cannot stand, right? That's what I believe Abraham and Lincoln said that. And right now they're trying to divide our house. And there, there are differences between us. But mm -hmm. nothing that we shouldn't celebrate, that we shouldn't share with each other and to make each other stronger. That's I've right. been doing that in my career for the past five years. I work with a lot of Mexican realtors and some of my clients like don't speak English. And who would have ever thought that I'd be doing that? But this is the blessed life that I live. And so I believe that we can all get along with each other by just starting from that position of respect and kindness. And look, if the person doesn't show it back to you, they're either having a real bad day or there's somebody that you need to keep your distance from anyway. And so it's a blessing to see that as well. Mm -hmm. And so um, 
you know, I, I just encourage people to do what I'm doing. That's my, my third resolution goal for the year is to continue doing that. Good. To start from a position of kindness, respect, to greet people, to try to connect with them, to to make their better their lives a better place. Mm-hmm. Um, you know. Just, just one smile at someone passing you by and a good morning is going to make their day because they're like, wow. Someone just smiled at me and said good morning because <laughs> that doesn't happen too often, right? It should happen more often, and I feel yes. like that was more of a thing in the past. I feel like since we didn't have, you know, our parents and my, my dad, he never had a cell phone. So when he'd pass by somebody, he'd actually talk to him. Like now we kind of have these different ways we communicate in society. But, like, mm-hmm. um, I still believe in that. I've, mm-hmm. I've seen how powerful it is. There's people who have written books about stuff like that. Like, look somebody in the eyes, smile, um, you know, be kind. Mm-hmm. Um, that's not to say you sound like a soft person or make it sound in- disingenuous. You do it in a nice way, like it's natural. And um, we need that. We need to uh, – it's just a small thing that we can all do to uh, to make the place a better place. And and hand-in-hand hand with that, I'll try to not make my problems, um, you know, somebody else's or project off my – Negative vibes onto somebody else, you mm-hmm. know. If I'm in a hurry, I'm not going to be rude to this person. But I've mm-hmm. been good at that. Mindfulness and yoga have helped me with that. Mm-hmm. And so, um, yeah, everybody try to make everybody's year a better year. And let's keep on working at a better society because we've been uh, wrenched and ravaged by things that are out of our control. And we've tried to go back to normal. And let's, can, let's keep on working at it. And let's, uh, let's help people out and get them healthy in the new year for 2022. Amen to that. Amen. Before we sign off, uh, you have a friend who is on the transplant list. Yeah, I want to give a big shout out to my best friend and big brother from another mother, um, Mark Reedy. Um, He does need a quadruple um, organ transplant. And I, I would love for everyone, whatever little tiny amount that you can, any amount um, doesn't whatever it is it just it builds up and um, I will do a big shout out to the GoFundMe um, so the address is GoFundMe or GoFund.me forward slash a five 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 two a b two and we're gonna do the repeat that again nice and slow for everybody okay GoFund dot me forward slash a five 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 two a b two and that will be for mark reedy so and then i wanted to do another shout out mark had his glasses on so brian had these glasses so i'm like yay i want to put these on today so apparently, Mark, you have the exact same ones. Uh, <laughs> my wife told me she got these from Target, so I don't know if that's where you got them. But uh, <laughs> we hope you're doing all right, my man, and uh, I will donate to your GoFundMe. If everybody gives a little, we'll have a lot, and that applies to everything. Um, so I'd be glad to help out the cause. Yeah. Thank you. I love it. And thank you to everyone. So 2022, baby. It's the year of the G. It's a good place to be. 2022 is going to be better. 2023 is even going to be better than that. So it's all good. Good things coming, folks. Let's stay positive. We love you. Um, Empower each other. Yes. Let's get after it. Let's transfer some good energy out there into the world. And uh, we appreciate you uh, tuning in, and we hope that you tune in again next time. In the meanwhile, stay sharp. Stay blessed. Don't be stressed. Take care of yourself. Take care of your family and your community. And tune in next time for the next episode of the Blue Podcast. We love you guys. Peace out. Love you guys. Peace out. Happy New Year's. Happy 2022. Do you. Help you. Help your family and your community. Peace.